Hey guys, so today on the Shed Sesh, we take a step-by-step -step look at installing the Joel's Garage Gear two post clear floor 4.5 ton hoist. Okay, so uh, we're about to take you through the uh, the install of the hoist, and uh, you know I'm sure Joel's sitting there going, "Don't f this up, Damien. This might be a little bit of a long one." So sit back in your easy chair and enjoy. If I wasn't doing all the filming, I probably could have got it done in a weekend. Uh, but you know, in between picking up the hoist, getting it in in situ. Check out my uh, check out my other uh, other video. Just actually getting the hoist in the shed. Uh, it was um, I mean that, those columns are not light. If you were to install a second hoist, you'd do it in in even half the time. It's um, it's just a matter of going through the instructions and uh, and just you know planning it out and building it. After I picked up the hoist and got it into the shed. I, uh, I think the first weekend I started on it uh, and it's taken me a few months to, uh, to get back to it. Please stick around to the end of the video and I'll, uh, I'll give you a few uh, quick tips and gotchas, a uh, few things that uh, just sort of cropped up as I, um, as I was doing the install uh, that if I had a known or known beforehand uh, would have saved a bit of time and uh, just made it a bit easier to assemble. Enjoy. Okay guys, so uh, today is the day where uh, we're making a start on the uh, on the hoist. It's going to be interesting. Just trying to find the instructions and the uh, in the kit, and then uh, we'll start assembling it. I'll show you in a second, you know what the kit comes with. Um, we'll go through it. I'll lay it all out, uh, and then we'll start start trying to assemble it. Uh, I don't have the use of my uh, my mate this uh, this week, so uh, I'm going to try it myself. Um, and see how we go. So when you uh, when you get the kit, you get the two columns, column one and column two. They are different. Uh, the column that you put the mount the pump on has this uh, this bracket here, whereas the other one does not. Now you also get the the top bar that goes between the, the columns. And there's the, uh, the bump stop over there as well. That's the uh, safety switch so you don't crush your roof on the, uh, the hoist. Uh, you also get, obviously, the legs. Four of those. Got everything spread around a bit at the moment. And a uh, box of bits. You've got the cable, hydraulic lines, some brackets, and other bits and pieces. I think they're the, uh, they're the feet. So I'll, uh, I'll spread these out so we know what we've got. I'll uh, follow the instructions. I think they're inside. And oh, and obviously, you also get the pump as well. So uh, so three three individual boxes. Um, really, the, the way they package it up, um, it's, it's very small, obviously just very heavy. When uh, you've got to move it in but there we go so I have found the instructions so that's box one so box two looks to have all the uh, the hydraulic and, and cabling in it with a couple of brackets I'm going to keep the pump in the box just for, for safety sake all right Put the feet or the legs so to be honest given the uh, given it's a hoist there's not a hell of a lot of parts to put together Okay, first and foremost, we need to work out where we want the hoist. So, as you can see, I've, uh, I've just placed them. They've been balancing for a week or so. Um, so, what I did was just draw out a bit of a floor plan of, of the shed, uh, of the, the bay that it's going in. Um, obviously, this is the, uh, the front door or the roller door here. I want to be able to come in, you know, I want to work out um, pretty much that those, uh, you know, I, if, I, if I go directly in the center of this roller door, um, I, I'll actually go in and uh, I'll be right in the center of the hoist. So every garage is gonna be different. Mine's a, yeah, this is a four meter, four meter bay. 
It's in four meter wide by six meters deep. Um, not big enough, but uh, yeah, it's done now. Okay, on this hoist, you want the outside edge to outside edge. And I'm trying not to go into too much detail, but uh, 3,551 millimeters. Not 50, not 52, 51. So we need to uh, move that out a little bit. No doubt, once you get the uh, Once you get the top stay in, uh, you can uh, move it around a, a tiny bit to straighten everything up. Next bit is to install these angle brackets right up there. So um, that'll, uh, that'll allow me to put the, uh, the cross brace on and uh, we'll start bolting it in. The instructions do say that you can have this, you know, this will go, this can go either, either side because they aren't symmetrical. So um, we'll uh, we'll see. It doesn't tell you what bolts to use in the uh, in the instructions, so you have to work it out. Looks like it's pretty easy to work out. Obviously, we need eight for the two sides. Um, this is the only bag. Decent bolts with uh, with eight in. All the others have got six and you know, very small bolts. So. Um, We'll go with those and get them up. I've got the uh, Two brackets up, one on that side, one on the other side. Remember, these are still not bolted down, so when you're up there, don't push on it too hard. The, uh, the instructions say those brackets can go on anyway, or them ones, um, but this can only go one a certain way, and that's the, the only directional bit I can see is this bracket this thing here so um i think it's the uh that's for the hydraulic hose to be protected and run through through there so um but the instructions don't actually tell you um what side it's supposed to go on it said it's directional but it doesn't tell you which direction to go on so i've had to jump on the website some pictures uh, and it looks like whatever side the pump is on the hose, the hydraulic hose, runs up furthest from it, and then runs up there. Actually, there's some some holes on the on here for the uh, the P P clips. Anyway, so um, so that runs up that side. So I'm going to guess that goes up to there. Um, runs on uh, runs on the other side, and then goes down. So I'm going to have to spin that thing around and uh, and install it. So, by myself, it's going to be interesting. Okay guys, <clears throat> so I'm going to pretend it isn't about six months since I started this thing and uh, I want to try getting back in on it. I, uh, we're in lockdown 4.0 so uh, it's good excuses any. So tip, tip number one, you've got your instructions. Instructions that come with it, although great, 
a black and white. Now I found, stumbled upon, on Joel's garage gear, you can actually download them in colour um, and print them off. So you can, actually, you can distinguish between the, the individual parts. It's, it's not impossible to, to use the other, the other instructions, but it just makes it that, that little bit easier. So. Extreme amounts of measuring, uh, you know, obviously once you uh, once you drill one of those holes, there's no going back, you can't offset it by a couple mil, but what I did, I measured from the post to the front of the shed, the post to the back of the shed, on both of them, so, uh, so they are centre. Next thing is making sure they're uh, level so um, actually you've also got to make sure the, the twist on them as well there's a little bit of play up there so uh, I've left them semi loose so I can actually uh, move these around uh, and rotate them so uh, I suppose it's, it's just a, a matter of adjusting a little bit here a little bit there just to try and uh, try and get them all uh, level so it's that time, let's start drilling. So uh, you get a bag of uh, Dyna bolts or anchor bolts. So there should be uh, 12 in there I think. Six for each column, and um, don't forget you got to drill the hole as long as the bolt. So, uh, so when you chuck it in, it's not uh, it's not still sticking out. Let's give it a go. So I've just knocked the uh, the first iron bolt in. Now in the, the instructions do say, oh, make sure the uh, the column doesn't move. And what you find with all the uh, vibration of the drilling that if you can see it a little x marks the spot is slightly out on that one you can see the lines shifted a bit so it's just it's just rotated that way a little bit so just be wary of that uh, and remember here's where you want to uh, try and add any shims if uh, if you need to get it level i need to chuck a, a tiny little shim on the back uh, but once you get the first couple in and you're shimmed, you should be ready to go. All done. You didn't need to see every individual one of those, but uh, the uh, bolts are full depth. Just make sure you're not um, wobbling the drill bit around. And I've tightened them up. I haven't, I haven't gone over manually, but I've just used the uh, the rattle gun and about bloody uh, 15 other duggers. So uh, I'll go back and and do it uh, manually in a bit and see. Uh, Feel a little bit, uh, a little bit safer. Bolted in. Bolted in. Now yeah, I've just got to. Uh, I'll go up. I've left the uh, I left these ones up here loose. There we go. Those ones. Um, so I've left them loose, and uh, I'll just go up, tighten those bad boys, 
uh, get all my uh, strings and stuff off and then uh, see how we go. Next on the instructions is raising the, uh, I don't know, whatever you call them, the, uh, the bits the car goes on or the, uh, the legs go on. You gotta raise them up into this lock here on both sides. So, uh, Joel, I don't, uh, I don't know how you expect me to do that. It looks pretty heavy, but we'll give it a go. Okay, I thought this thing was gonna to have to come up here before it locks. Uh, as soon as this carriage gets in, you can hear the uh, hear it locking in, so it's locked in about two or three. Now I just need to make sure the other side is exactly the same height, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll fit the cables. In. So doing the cables now either end there's a long and a short uh, I don't think I saw the uh, I read in the instructions uh, which one's which but if you pay close attention it's the type of thing that's easily missed the shorter end comes up from the bottom and the longer one is the one that ends up coming down so this is the main the main adjuster so uh, anyway we'll uh, try and run this bad these bad boys so we've done the first side, um, we'll, uh, we'll film the second side now that we know what's going on. So what I've done here, uh, you could probably drop this cable down through the top, through there, and when it gets to the bottom, spin it round. Um, it, you don't have to take off that wheel uh, to get the cable underneath. The wheel but it definitely was tight it's probably the best best way to do it um, and then you poke it up the other one up to uh, to there that plate can come off to adjust them as well but then the uh, so that's the, the short end coming up from below and it goes down there and around up through the uh, the rollers up there. Now I haven't got it on the rollers at the moment because they need to be, you need to take them off to get the cable over the roller. Then it goes down one side and then, so I haven't put the rollers up there and it comes down the other side and there's the long end that goes in the, uh, goes in the top there as well. So now we'll uh, probably do some uh, some fast mo through the uh, fitting of the other cable. And whilst running the cables, it's always good to have a, he a helper. <laughs> Wear some gloves. Yeah, you get a few metal splinters, uh, and they're a bit greasy on the uh, on the cable, which is fair enough. But uh, just don't want the metal metal splinters. <laughs> So I've got all the cables in. Uh, looking at, uh, looks like on the next page they actually show both nuts on the uh, on the other side of the uh, the thread on there. So um, so I'll change that around because I've got, I've got it. Uh, I've got one on the uh, on here. So both nuts there. Now I've just got to get up um, and pull out the uh, the roller guide 
thing and put the cable across, over the rollers. Uh, the, ro the rollers are on down the bottom. So, uh, so this is the, the cables run up here. I've just got to pull out this uh, pull out this pin. Over the uh, over the pulleys, and you know, they just run either side. If you're uh, afraid of heights, this isn't the job for you. done here is adjusted these the smaller rods so these ones here um, both the same on both sides and then I'm working to get the tension on the cables so you adjust that one for that cable and then the other side the other side of that on uh, for the other cable so I'll uh, for the most part, you can just pull it, pull it down. Yeah, obviously it's a brand new cable. It's got to give a bit of leeway over the uh, the pulleys, um, and then uh, I'm sure there'll be a bit of final adjustment once the fluid's in and the thing's going up and down a few times. <sighs> Getting there. So now we install the hydraulic pump, hydraulic unit on the uh, on the side plate. Tip for young players, put them in the slotted hole. So the next few pieces, we have a short hydraulic hose, goes to there. We've got a T-piece goes in there and a medium hose goes right down the bottom of the, uh, the angle 90 degree down to the bottom of that cylinder and into that T-piece as well and then it'll be a, the longer one goes up there over to the other side to the other hydraulic cylinder the other uh, hydraulic line this will go from the T intersection of the uh, of the pump up along the top and down. Now it's got to go through those loops that are on the top. We'll, I'll show you when I get up there. Uh, and there's a bunch of looks like P clips that that you know stri strap it all to the uh, to the um, the posts. Yeah, we'll throw it through. Fill up the reservoir um, with M32 or M46. I've got 46. Bought this a uh, couple of months ago. Not sure why I chose it. Um, I think it comes down to your uh, location and temperatures and that type of thing. Uh, although it's bloody freezing at the moment, <clears throat> so uh, 
takes about 12 litres going by the instructions. Okay, so I've just filled it up. Um, I think I forgot to press record. Excellent. So it um, takes about 12 litres. There is a, a dipstick in, uh, on the cap uh, with a minimum maximum level. <clears throat> so I filled it up about max. Still got to fill up the, the hydraulic hoses and that type of thing. Uh, make sure all your fittings are tight down. There's only like the T section, the back here, and the bottom of the columns. columns. So uh, otherwise, we'll get fluid everywhere. Okay, next item on the agenda is the safety bar that goes across. So if you lift the car too high, uh, if it hits it, it won't crush the roof, it'll stop. So she's in. I fed the wire, wire up through that extra hole there. And I'll, I'll go to the top in a sec and show you, show you that. The idea here is that that opens it up, and uh, turns the pump off. Here is hello. Feed these wires so they they're kept away from the they're kept away from the cables through here. There's actually the sort of the the P clips. Down on the other side, are actually um, have a slot for the wire as well. First of all, get an electrician to wire this up. Uh, I can see why the wiring instructions aren't in for the safety switch either. It's actually 240 volt <clears throat> uh, going going up there and back down. Um, with my accreditations or you know certificates uh, over the years and diplomas uh, in electrical electronics, uh, I'm actually allowed to wire up from an external, like from a plug, into a box, which is weird because if I used what was hanging out and I, d I did any wiring on this side, you know, on the outside of it. Um, I can't, I can't do that. So, uh, um, so I didn't, I didn't go through the process of wiring that up. Um, but you know, definitely, uh, definitely get an electrician in to uh, to wire it up properly. Okay, so now I'm uh, now I'm up to running the cable that goes up across the top. So when you uh, you pull the lever to disengage the uh, the locking, the safety catches, it disengages both sides. So, uh, got the instructions there, found most of the parts, and uh, we'll get them run. Okay, so I've put the wheels in for the cables. Now, I've used this, the small wheels for the uh, for these and the big wheels for those. Uh, one of one of the big ones with binding, so I wasn't quite sure whether it was supposed to be the small or the big. But I think uh, once it goes on uh, in 
the slot up around the back. Uh, the small wheels are the go there. The bleed instructions are up on one of the cylinders on the uh, on the drive arm, uh, but uh, just read them. So what they pretty much say is raise it to the top, let it go down, raise it three feet, the arm three feet off the ground, and then just crack the bleed screws until clear fluid comes out. Uh, do that, uh, do that inside, and uh, repeat if necessary. So it should be bled. So we'll give it a crack. So now we've got the hydraulics bled. I need to, if you, you heard it before when it was going up, they weren't clicking on the safeties at the same time. So I just need to adjust the cables so they, uh, they click at the same time. Let's adjust this one here uh, and then uh, get them at the same height. And then we are done. So, gotta tell you, quietly nervous as hell. Let's see how this goes. That gets ya. Halfway there. Uh, the idea is move it down onto the stops. And we'll work on it. Whew. All right, let's keep going.
this is awesome. Talk about life goals. Talk about life goals. See how, how we, far we can go. <laughs> I have to say, I have wanted a hoist for most of my, actually probably all of my adult life into my, uh, into my childhood, so quite a few years. So to be able to realise that dream is absolutely magnificent. So uh, thanks again, Joel. So I wasn't sure whether to talk about this, um, but I figured a company standing isn't just on how cheap they can uh, they can sell you something or how many things they can sell you. It's whether they look after you after they've sold to you know sold something to you. You know if there's any issues or anything like that. I mean an insurance company is only as good as uh, you know when you go to um, when you go to claim. Uh, you can give them give them money for years and years, but until you uh, until you claim, that's when you uh, you find out whether they're any good. So for the astute viewer, you might have noticed that uh, there was another top beam on the floor while I was doing the uh, doing the install, and I already had a top beam up the top. Now, on the first weekend, I, I started installing. the The manufacturing tolerance of that beam was just a little bit out, and yeah, it's quite easily missed, but it just it just stopped. Um, stop me from being able to straighten the columns you know when I was trying to trying to get the columns straight now I jumped on Instagram and sent a, a DM to the uh, Joel's garage gear page within I'd say half an hour possibly Joel somebody else got back to me said yeah I can see the problem I sent some photos I can see the problem literally early the next week I had one of the guys at my front door with a new one he even offered to um, to jump up and swap it for me. I said no, it's all good. The rain was rain was shocking, so um, absolutely amazing. Um, just had a, another question. I don't know whether you know I was supposed to know this or not, but the hydraulic unit, the outlet, was in on the other side. So I just asked another question on Instagram. Within, again, half an hour, I got a reply back saying, just swap the plugs, job done. So uh, very impressed with the customer service. So, uh, you know, if, if, if that's something to uh, worry about, see if I hadn't have had something go wrong, I wouldn't be able to tell you how good the customer service was. But uh, even just just buying and going and picking up, the, uh, the guys were great. To go through, uh, you know, the experience and the install, uh, some of the things that were, were done great, obviously customer service, fantastic, couldn't have asked for a better, uh, a better outcome. Um, one of the things, threaded holes in the columns, they'd all been tapped out, you didn't have to twit about with them, you could just screw the screws in, not a problem. A lot of the times when you get a, uh, you know, something that's got uh, been powder coated, uh, we'll get to powder coating in a sec, um, it, uh, you know, powder coat gets in the in the threads and you struggle to uh, you know inst install the screws because you know you're in awkward positions in some of these and uh, and trying to install them you know the easier it can be the the better bleeding the rams I was I was dreading that couldn't have been easier you would have seen in the video but literally pump them up to to a, a certain level crack the uh, the bleed screw at the top you could hear the air come out as soon as fluid come out locked it off job done. So I did do that a couple of times, um, and uh, yeah, she seems to be working well now. As far as cost goes for the uh, you know for the unit, uh, it's one of the one of the most competitive out there, and yeah, it doesn't look like there's any uh, any shortcuts taken in uh, in you know quality manufacturing. So a couple of gotchas. 
Uh, possibly I'm just a nuffy, but uh, I I happen to level the uh, level the legs uh, the the posts with uh, with some you know, galvanised steel I had lying around, uh, which worked well. Uh, but I did wonder what these were. I'm going to guess these were the shims that uh, that you put in the, under the the bolts uh, and level it up. It wasn't in the instructions. Um, and uh, maybe maybe I should have just known, but now you know what they are. Uh, measurements were a little bit off. The, the measurements are very uh, in the in the instructions are very exact, uh, like you know so many millimeters. Um, one thing I did did notice, you know, when I went through, I um, put had one col had both columns roughly in the right position. I put the I just followed the instructions. I put the uh, the bar across the top, um, then I. Obviously leveled, you know, plumbed up one of the columns, and you know, you're fixed at the top there. So you go and yeah, you plumb, plumb the other one up. That's going to move the uh, the measurement a bit. So it wasn't to the wasn't to the millimeter, but I think as long as you uh, you keep everything plumb, uh, it's going to be within you know, a centimeter or so. Now, <laughs> probably the one one of the biggest uh, the biggest things I, I thought it, it was just you know. It's, it's heavy. By the time by the time you work out what's what's wrong with it, um, you're kind of too far. But the legs, there was powder coat in the holes for the legs. Now the pins are very precise, and the um, the powder coat is actually removed from the blue part of the the ram it goes up and down, but it's not removed from the yellow part in the legs. Uh, and it's not until uh, you get halfway through. Joel's like, Damo's lost his warranty. So, um, the, uh, as I said, it's not until you get halfway through that you realize that it's the powder coat that's, that's you know, in the way. Um, once you uh, file out that powder coat, uh, they go in quite easily. Now, <clears throat> the legs, there's four, four legs obviously that, uh, that go up, the, uh, the front and the back. Two have stickers with a C on them. Nowhere in the instructions that it, I could see does it have these legs go f towards the front or to the back. I, I, I suppose it depends on which way you have the, uh, you know, which way you have the, um, the hoist set up and how much room you've got in front and behind the uh, the hoist uh, but I did notice in time to when I was putting the uh, the pins in and the legs in that I put two on the front two on the back now the difference uh, I can see is that uh, two of them have three sections to the leg and two of them have only two sections to the leg so uh, Joel anyone Comment down below if you uh, if there's a, a specific way of uh, of doing that. Now, one one of the biggest the biggest things um, you, as, as you're going through the bleed the bleed instructions for the uh, for the rams, it does tell you to sit it about three feet off the ground uh, to bleed it that type of thing. So <clears throat> there is a fill a fill level. It says it takes about 12 liters, and there is like a little dipstick um, in there. For your fill level. Now, obviously, you know, in the reservoir, as you as you pump it up, all that all the fluid from that reservoir goes into the the rams and through the the, the tubes. So, if you fill that fill level up while the uh, the legs are still about you know a couple of feet off the ground, when you drop it down to floor level, uh, all of that um, all of that fluid that's in the rams fills up the reservoir and goes all over the floor. So just some, um, I didn't realize there'd be that much. I, I figured it'd go up a little bit, but I didn't realize there'd be that much. So after I mopped up that mess and just got a little bit of, uh, you know, removed some of the, uh, the fluid, not a problem. So I did video some of the, uh, some of the wiring of the, the safety switch. I didn't put it in the, in the video itself because uh, it did. It did work out that it was a 240 volt uh, safety switch, 
Uh, now with my background, uh, I'm okay to wire in to uh, you know wire a an extension lead pretty much or a, a lead into a box. But anybody that hasn't you know got the certifications to uh, to be able to do that kind of thing, um, you really do need to get a uh, licensed electrician in to do the uh, the install of the safety switch and the wiring up the of the, the hoist itself. There was nothing specific in the instructions as you went through to wiring up it. I'd say that's uh, that's the reason. D it did tell you how to uh, how to mount that safety switch, but just not how to wire it up because uh, there's a couple of different options on ways to uh, to wire that up as well. I'm assuming there is a Joel. It's not just a uh, a business name to steer you away from the actual real name of the business owner. Should be uh, should be called Joel Shed Gear. Just saying. Maybe in public you could you could wear where you said shed a second and then people I will, will I will one day. And then people will actually recognise Yeah, maybe. As a, the shed sesh man. <laughs> or said shesh. Or said shesh. Daniel, he's gonna say that one on one of the Daniel. That's a mouthful. <laughs>